All right, ready for our opponent this week, which is nobody. So we're going to practice. Uh, saw some things in, in the game that we can obviously improve on, and uh, but I, I was really thankful that a bunch of guys got reps and um, saw some really good things uh, in terms of our development, progress that we're trying to make as a program. So uh, that was uh, really important for those guys to get those reps. Um, thought Tyler did grow well for playing one quarter. Jaron did well for playing one half, and the guys that came in did a decent job. I thought they're, I mean, A-Rod and E could tell you they thought maybe it could have been a little bit cleaner, and Ed could have told you that from our kickoff uh, cover. But uh, make mistakes, learn from them, get better. Uh, it was good to play that game, get that win, and do it for the seniors. Um, looking forward to this week and, and working, and we'll get uh, this week we'll get three really good practices in. Uh, and get some lifting and, and get the guys uh, a little bit of break over the weekend. Uh, maybe some of them can go home and, and watch their you know their alma maters play this weekend and come back ready to work for our opponent, which is Georgia Southern. So I'll take any questions you guys may have. Start with uh, Jared and then Jay and Mitch. Kalani, this is a chance for, for us to talk – big picture stuff and I wanted to talk about recruiting some guys were on campus over the weekend got a lot of people excited what are you seeing as far as the elevation of BYU's recruiting you've always said that that's the lifeblood it's something you want to focus how is that uh, evolving now currently no I, I think our our mindset and our efforts towards recruiting are always going to be the same we want to communicate and get the guys that want to be here you know and there's a uh, and then there's a lot of guys that don't know about our school and, and trying to reach out to them and um, let them know what our program's about and what our school's about. And I think there's there's a, a lot of uh, young men out there that fit our program and do can do really well here. Um, other than that, I mean, I, I know that the, gaining a lot of interest, people are excited about our program. That's, that's a good sign. Um, but... Yeah, I think that's a huge reflection off of the, the fan base. Our fan base is amazing. I said it after the game. I keep keep looking at the the uh, the film and seeing the stands be just being packed, you know. And I think there's a moment at the beginning where everyone's filing in, and um, but you you saw it in the you know early in the first half where where, where the seats are. I mean, it was it was a packed home. So. Uh, Against an FCS opponent, that was really good for us to see. And uh, but I, I think uh, recruiting goes because of our fan base is, is amazing, and, and they uh, they make they've always made us a legitimate contender as far as uh, having that footprint in college football. And uh, I think the move to the Big Twelve confirms that, and and then we'll see. We'll just keep building on that. That's. Uh, recruiting is really important, so it's something that you do every day, something that you're always focused on. That's a big part of what we're trying to do, is, is, and that's part of development for our program. So we'll, we'll always be in tune with it. And there's a lot of there's a lot of five star, four star guys that can do really well here, just like walk ons, one star, two star, no star um, guys that just want to try out and, and are fast and strong, and they believe in what we do as a program. Uh, th those individuals can thrive here. Kalani, do you think anything changes with the Big 12 move, either making your program more appealing or, or changing who you can reach out to? Does that change at all? We're going to stay humble, work hard, get the right young men that, that belong in this in this program and build it around the, the culture that we have that's been established for uh, many years. And so that's what we're going to do. I, if it changes, it changes. If, if, it's, if it continues to improve, then that's all I, we're focused on. I'm um, yeah, but, but there's a lot of interest already. It's already changed since we got in the Big 12. It's so recruiting is always a changing thing. Our goal is to be innovative and creative and try to find ways to get get the the guys that fit our program here. Go ahead, Jay. Kalani, any update on uh, Neil Pau? Was his injury season ending? Um, not can't confirm that yet. Doesn't look good for Georgia Southern, and so um, we'll we'll have to probably have. This is the day that we probably we get more information today and tomorrow. And so as soon as we know, I'll let you guys know. 
Um, Neil is welcome to let you guys know more because it's his body. So, but we're gonna until. But I, I don't really know all the details yet. But uh, very doubtful for Georgia Southern, and we'll see how um, if we can confirm how long the the, the, the length of the injury will be. Will be. Then, kind of like Jared had a, a big picture question. Um, is it really gratifying for you guys? A lot of people said this was you had to kind of prove last year wasn't a fluke by you know proving it this year. You guys didn't really buy into that narrative, but it was out there. How gratifying is it though now that it's kind of you've done it to to basically say, yeah, we did it. <laughs> no, that's that. Listen, we're we're gonna, we're gonna work hard, stay humble, stay hungry, and. There's always room for improvement. And so we haven't done it yet, Jay. You know, we still have more games to go. So what we've earned is another game together, which is exciting that, that we're going to have another opportunity to play together and more practice time. But we're, we're focused on, on getting better this week, uh, getting an early start on Georgia Southern, and then going from there. I, I think uh, for us, is this, the goal is to just uh, um, keep working on what's ahead of us, our our, our culture is built on on love and learn, and and those are two things that that don't have a ceiling to it. So we're just going to keep building on that and trying to find ways to get better. But uh, uh, the the feeling of of uh, being accomplished and feeling like we're we're done, I don't think that's ever going to happen. We we need to keep always working and and uh, trying to get better. So I, I that stuff only generates complacency and and. Uh, you know, I will let you guys pat us on the back. We'll we'll work on trying to get better. So that's the goal. And then we we have some really good young men that can stay focused on it. And I know we all see the the long term and where we want to be. But uh, if you're so focused on that, you're not enjoying the moment right now. So we're gonna live in the moment, have fun, learn, love what we do, and and who we get to be around. And uh, that's that's gonna be the ultimate focus. Um, just wrapped up uh, an FCS game. Uh, you know, in the future, when you're in a league, do you want to see FCS games maybe still factored into the the Big Twelve? You know, when you're in the Big Twelve and those non-conference schedules in the future. Well, I think that's everyone's schedule. You know, it's not just like we're the only ones that play FCS. That's kind of part of college football and, and the FBS level is that you play uh, an FCS opponent. I, I think it's good for football, uh, not good for so, some of the teams that have lost the FCS opponents. That's happened uh, every year, it seems to happen. And, and um, um, you know, I, they're very competitive in football at, at every level, Division Two, NAIA, Division Three, F, FCS and FBS. And so uh, I, I think for the way college football works, it's, it allows them to make some money FCS teams and um, I think for for everybody to get that experience I mean the Idaho State players love the experience of playing in a packed house at Lavelle Edwards Stadium you, you could see how excited they were to play I mean that last drive they were trying to get in the end zone you know so they, they enjoyed playing the entire game and uh, you know I, I think uh, Coach Fennessy does a great job at, at leading that program and, and they were right in the moment having a lot of fun I don't know if you want to take that away from people but uh, it seems to be a common thing where every every F, FBS team plays an FCS team and gives them an opportunity to to be in that ex, have that experience and then play that game. Over the weekend, uh, you guys officially announced uh, Kingsley's uh, addition to the program. I'm curious, what what type of football football player, maybe most importantly, person is your program getting in Kingsley? Yeah, great young man uh, from a wonderful family. He's he's gonna. Um, uh, and, and he happens to be a really good football player. So we're looking forward to him joining our team and our, our family. He has a lot of great friends in the, in the program already on our current roster. And so I think he'll he'll fit right in with our group, and he knows that. And um, I think it's he's really comfortable being here and being back home. And so I think we're going get, to get the most out of him. But there's a lot of work to be done. Uh, he knows it, and, and a lot of others do as well, and we're excited to have him. And and have him be part of, officially be part of our family. All right, let's go with uh, Sean and then Jake. Yeah, Coach, seeing as, as how this 
is a bye week obviously a little bit different you alluded in your opening statement how um you know you're looking forward to this week's game because there is no game uh if you will can you just kind of give us a brief overview of what a bye week looks like for you guys i mean you're obviously still practicing but do the do the practices get a little shorter do you maybe lift a little bit more i mean is there is there obviously trying to get healthy is is kind of a, a big motivating factor so what what does just kind of this week look like for the program um and maybe follow up does it involve a certain watch party for a tv show on espn on tuesday a certain what uh, a watch party for a certain tv show on espn on tuesday night no, we don't do that. We're, we're these guys. School's hard, man. They got to study. They, they they need to, uh, you know, go do their homework, and when they have extra time, watch more film. So, uh, I think I think you explained it all there. We're gonna lift. We're gonna we're gonna practice. I mean, we're gonna have three really good full practices. Um, we will do that Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. We're gonna give them Friday, Saturday off. And we're going to lift um, between now and then to get that get going. So it all depends if you're a guy that started and played tons of reps in the 10 weeks that we just went through, if, if how much how much you're going to do in practice, is, especially in terms of the physical part of it. I think it's important for us to take advantage of, of uh, the time to heal, but also we, we can't get rusty either. So it's uh, it can't I can't give you an answer without saying that um, it depends who you are. And so there's some guys that – need to tackle this week so we're going to see that and there's some guys that don't need it but they need to stay stay uh, fresh and polished and and uh can't get rusty so uh it's it's an individual type of deal and you can kind of guess who's going to be tackling and who's not you know but uh everyone's going to be running everyone's going to be lifting everyone's going to get stronger uh physically mentally and hopefully spiritually throughout this week Go ahead, Jake. Yeah, Kalani, going back to the question just kind of related to the Kings, the uh, Suomataya news is, are you guys seeing an increased interest from, I guess, players, athletes, prospects reaching out to you guys proactively, whereas you guys having to reach out to them? Does that make sense? Yeah, we're not allowed to reach out to anybody until they get into the portal. So we are compliant to all NCAA rules. That's how it works. But uh, there's always people that are interested that, that like BYU. They like our brand of football and offense, defense, and special teams. And so I imagine with the transfer portal, there's already a lot of players that are interested in, in, in being a Cougar. And so, you know, it'd be foolish for us not to, not to listen and not to pay attention to what's going on in the transfer portal. But we have a certain standard here, and those don't change when it comes to playing BYU. There's things that you're going to have to do that, that to be be able to represent on the field and off the field, and uh, those standards don't change. And so, and that goes with academics as well. There's a lot of talk made of you guys going 10 weeks without a bye week in there. How do you evaluate your team just coming out of that, having it endured 10 straight weeks of football? Yeah, it was tough. I mean, I, I think uh, you'd love to have everyone be healthy, and, and uh, I think the unfortunate part is that there are some injuries and. Um, but on the, on the positive side of things, we saw some guys step up and, and fill in. So we felt good about the depth. It got tested in a lot of different positions, but I thought the guys uh, done well with, with their response. And then uh, I thought the coaches did a good job coaching them. I, it could all be better still. I, I think we could do things better as a team and as a program in the fundamentals and, and with our technique. Uh, and that's every position. So we're going to work on that. This is a great week to focus completely on – on the fundamentals and technique of the game and then um, you know have that work with your assignments but I think it's good to go back to the basics with our players um, and then also get a, a, an early start on, on our opponent which is Georgia Southern. I, we're looking forward to getting out there and playing in, in that part of the country and seeing our fans out that way as well so um, yeah that, that's it's still work we still got to work this isn't this isn't a vacation time the 10 weeks were hard um, but this is, I think this week's not going to be, it's not a vacation week. This is a work week as well. The Eagles are primarily an option-based offense. Will you get a head start on trying to get ready for that defensively this week? That's a good idea. I think we'll have to do that. Yeah, that's, we're given extra time to do that, so we might as well get an early start on it. Fair enough, thanks. Uh, Jerry Lloyd? 
Kalani, you were just talking earlier about how guys would have a chance maybe to go watch uh, their alma mater. and How important you – know, we, we talk a lot about the importance of the college game. Talk to me about the high school game. I'm just curious about – it's obviously important from a recruiting standpoint, but how important is it for you to have the boys appreciate those roots and the development that they had at that level? Yeah, we always talk about um, a lot of the hard work and sacrifice that it took for their – for others to get to our players to where they're at now, right? And so, and 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 for them to go home and uh, be around their loved ones that that worked hard and sacrificed for them and show them appreciation and gratitude, but also to go back and and do it for their local coaches or, or the you know the people that spend a lot of time with them and and getting them on the football field where they want to be. And there's a lot of great teachers that they go, but when they go back home, it's good for them to go and connect with. With the, uh, you know, with with their old high school and things like that. But I think two days is enough. Get your butt back here to Provo and let's go back to work. You know, so uh, that's. I, I think we've given them that time to do that. And many of the guys are going to still stay here and, uh, and 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 just connect with their with their um, high school coaches and teachers and loved ones after the season. You know, but. Uh, some are going to go home, but I think for the majority of them, I think they're just going to stay here and study and get better and maybe get some extra lifts in. Do you have a opinion as far as multi-sport athletes in high school versus those that specialize and really develop their skills? Because I know that can be an interesting balance for kids coming to the college level. Yep, I like multi-sport athletes. I, I think uh, if you're an athlete, I like to see it in, in different uh, if we're about development here and trying guys at different positions, then I like to see them do some things that are a little bit different on the basketball court, on the wrestling mat, whatever it could be, the baseball diamond on, on, on you know, where, wherever, on the track, things like that. So uh, I like to evaluate guys doing things um, that's not just all about football. I like to see the type of athlete that they are. So. I encourage all our players, all our co- our, our recruits and uh, players, that, you know, in high school to go out there and give it their best, even if they're not starting on their basketball team. Go and show me that you're a good teammate. Things like that. I think that's really important. Being part of a team is really special. Yeah, time for one more question or two. Uh, go ahead, Mitch. Hey, Kalani, I wanted to ask you about uh, Keanu Hill. Uh, where has uh, Keanu? maybe made the biggest improvements in his development from when he arrived on campus to now? Uh, probably getting healthy was the number one thing. He got banged up a little bit um, early in his career, but uh, he's resilient and he works really hard and he's taken to, to Fessy's coaching. So he um, he just needed his moment and his time and, and he took advantage of the reps that he got. And, um, but it, it wasn't just on offense. You see the things that he's doing on special teams. Um, the the kid belongs on the football field, and it's it's good when you have a bunch of guys that belong on the football field for us to try to find reps for them. And that's it's a good problem to have as a in in a, in a football team. So uh, he works really hard and, and deserves to be on the field. And uh, I'm glad that when his number's called, he's been able to answer it many times, and and not just in in as a receiver, but in, in a lot of different roles. I wanted to just ask you one more thing about uh, recruiting. You know, when, when recruits uh, come on campus, whether for an unofficial or official visit, uh, what experience are you hoping recruits have while they visit the campus or see a game? Like, what, what experience are you hoping they gain from being on campus and seeing your program up close? I want them to see the people that, that makes this place special. And that's the players and just the people, the fans, everyone that's around. So I think when they get here and they get to see the game type of environment and interact with the fans and see how awesome our fans are, that's that's something that you can't replicate. You know, you just have to be there in the moment. So uh, we, we try to bring recruits in when we're playing, but also uh, bring them to other, uh, other sporting events that are on campus so they can see uh, our, our awesome student section, The Rock, and they can see – the, the rest of the fans and how, how much support the athletic department gives here. I mean, they, they gain so much support from fans all over the place. And uh, I want to make sure that they recognize that, and that when we go on the road, we have fan support all over the place. And so 
Uh, that's the key for me. It's the people and and um, and talking to our players. I, I think that's the uh, they're the be- the best uh, spokespeople for our program. Um, I think they should talk to all the guys, not just the starters. They can talk to whoever they want in the locker room and interact with them. And so uh, when they get that feel for what it's like to be on the team, I think that's a good – for me, that's that's the best um, selling point that we could make. Funny. Coach, thanks so much for joining us today. All right, Appreciate guys. Your time. Stay safe.